Chapter One of Chinese Diamonds for the King of Kings. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ross Clay to June seventh, two K sixteen, Roebuck, South Carolina. Chinese Diamonds for the King of Kings by Rosalind Goforth. Sketch One: As Silver Is Refined. Part One. The birth of a soul. One sultry afternoon in June nineteen blank, an elderly woman, seated in the shade of her front gateway, the coolest spot she could find, was fanning vigorously in vain attempt to keep cool, discontented mutterings keeping time to her fan. It was time the long summer siesta ended and for folks to get to work, so thought Mrs. Duan but folks evidently thought otherwise for the whole village seemed as still and lifeless as a graveyard just as the woman was about to rouse the sleeping household her attention was attracted to a man wheeling a barrow on which lay a sick child putting his barrow down opposite the duan's gateway the man wiped his steaming brows as he stepped forward saying honourable lady my child is very thirsty we have come a long way will you give us water gladly said the woman hastening into the inner court as fast as her excessive avoirdupois would permit in a moment or two she reappeared not with ice-cold water as in our country but with a kettle of boiling water and two bowls wheel the child into the shade and rest yourself said the woman as she filled the bowls then setting one down beside the sick child she motioned to the man to take a seat on the stone steps where are you going she asked by way of opening the conversation i'm taking my child to the foreign doctor at w blank what she exclaimed with a look of horror you are surely never going to venture inside that place we have heard some terrible things about those people well replied the man all i can say is this a neighbor woman of ours went to the hospital perfectly blind and came back seeing almost as well as you or i a man in my village had a terrible leg he would certainly have died but he went there too and came back healed he told us the doctor treated him as well as the patients who could pay though they knew he was too poor to pay but why then do people talk so persisted mrs Duan. you know the proverb replied the man with rather a contemptuous shrug you can bridle a horse or a mule but who can bridle a woman's tongue with this parting thrust and a polite bow the man caught up his barrow and hurried on. Mrs. Duan's husband was what is known in China as the leading man of his region. He was a landowner of considerable means and was widely known and sought after as a doctor, though he had no knowledge whatever of Western methods of treating diseases nor of surgery, but was an expert in the art of needle-pricking, a common Chinese treatment not infrequently used with fatal results. As the man with the barrow disappeared in the distance, Dr. Duan appeared at his dispensary gateway, across the street from where his wife was sitting. Calling him to her, she related what had just passed. The doctor listened, but said nothing, paying no attention to the fierce denunciation of the missionaries with which she ended. Her husband had learnt through many years of bitter experience with her to say little but act. When the following morning the doctor announced his intention of taking the younger son to the foreign doctor to have a growth on his foot removed, of course mrs duan began to storm and rage but to no purpose except to give matter of interest to her neighbours trouble to her household and sickness to herself her fits of temper were so violent and sustained that it is little wonder nature usually had her way by a general collapse when the naturally strong woman would lie for days as helpless as a child as dr duan started off for the mission hospital it would be too much to imagine that his mind was quite free from fear or doubt but his intense curiosity to see the foreign doctor about whom he had heard such conflicting reports and a desire if possible to see something of his methods of treatment overcame every other thought a walk of some twelve english miles brought them to the city of w blank on reaching the mission hospital they found themselves in the midst of a crowd of sick and suffering ones procuring their tickets of admission they joined themselves to the queue moving towards the dispensary door the moment dr duan found himself and his child with a dozen or more others 
ushered into the doctor's presence all fears vanished who indeed could not trust those keen quiet kind eyes stepping aside purposely so that the others might be treated first and thus give him his chance to watch the foreigner dr Dwan made the most of his opportunity at last the assistant called him forward to take his name the moment he had given it dr blank the missionary looked up quickly and said why are you dr Dwan of c blank that is my unworthy name replied the other immediately dr blank left the patient he was treating and came forward with such a friendly smile the chinese doctor was completely taken by surprise i am very pleased indeed to meet you the missionary said heartily and in a few moments had the other quite at his ease from their first meeting these two men drew naturally together the missionary doctor recognized in dr duan the true instincts of a physician and generously remembered that this man's ignorance and inefficiency as a doctor was not due to lack of natural ability but from the lack of advantages such as he himself had enjoyed the removal of the growth on the boy's foot was a simple operation but it required the administration of chloroform when this was about to be given the father showed decided nervousness but a few quiet firm words from dr blank allayed his fears he stood aside and watched with intense wonder and admiration every detail of the operation dr blank saw the man's keen interest in everything connected with the hospital and arranged for the care of his boy so that the father could be with him in the operating room the afternoon clinic and ward visitation when the work of the day was over the missionary sometimes invited dr duan to his study in his house at the rear of the compound it was at such times the missionary doctor opened to his less favored brother the way of salvation it was not till the close of his stay that dr duan seemed to really understand the two men were talking in the study when dr duan spoke out suddenly as if to get something off his mind dr blank i have a request i find hard to make dr blank's face fell as visions of many past requests came before him but he said merely what can i do for you the fact is continued the other people say you have strange things in your home would you allow me to see the place the missionary jumped to his feet with a relieved smile saying why come along now i'll show you everything through the house they went each room seemed more wonderful to dr duan than the last everything was a wonder but what especially aroused his admiration and astonishment was the schoolroom where the missionary's children girls as well as boys were at their lessons all he saw made a deeper impression on his mind than the missionary or even he himself at the time realized some days later when in conversation with one of the missionaries something like the following took place dr duan looking intently at the missionary suddenly said with deep feeling do you know what people are saying about you all yes i think we do returned the other with a little laugh at least we know quite enough then i cannot understand how you can stay and do what you are doing with my people my friend replied the missionary drawing his chair nearer to the other and speaking from the depths of a full heart it is like this jesus christ left his home in heaven to suffer and die for us for me the love that made him do that he has given to me and those with me it is this love that makes us do all this for your people you mean that you are just following in jesus christ's steps just doing as he did yes came the answer quietly just that will you follow him too there was a firm and set purpose in dr duan's face as after a moment's pause he said gravely yes i will i will follow the lord jesus this man counted not the cost he simply saw the gleam and faced for it little did he dream how short and stormy the path would be that led from the gleam to the glory beyond part two from gleam to glory Quote, the son of god goes forth to war a kingly crown to gain his blood-red banner streams afar who follows in his train who best can drink his cup of woe triumphant over pain who patient bears his cross below he follows in his train Unquote. when dr duan informed his family that he had become a christian or as they put it 
become a slave of the foreigners it was as if a thunderbolt had fallen in their midst the first step the doctor felt he must take as master of his own home was to destroy the household gods while the first ones were being torn down the family were too terror-stricken to offer any resistance but by the time the kitchen god was reached mrs Dwan had somewhat recovered her senses and stood before the stove over which the god was pasted prepared to fight firmly without undue violence her husband put her aside and securing the god crumpled altogether in his hands for they were made of paper he faced the crowd which filled the court here for almost an hour the brave man preached with intense earnestness of the love of the one true god in giving his son for them he then kindled the gods and burnt them before the crowd who when all was over dispersed but with black looks and ominously quiet for many months dr Dwan laboured among his neighbours and through the whole region trying to win men to his new faith but public opinion was too strongly against him it was universally believed by his family as well as outsiders that the foreigners had bewitched him and that the gods would certainly wreak their vengeance upon him strange to say what followed tended to strengthen them in this belief a railway which had recently been built by foreigners passed over part of dr Dwan's land one day soon after he had come out as a christian one of the doctor's hired men was ploughing a piece of this land with a yoke of oxen or mules when crossing the rails and blinded by a dust storm which was blowing the man did not notice the train which struck and killed both animals though the heathen hired man remained uninjured the most precious possession a man can have in china next to a son is a grandson dr Dwan had one such treasure a fine healthy child he was the pride and joy of both grandparents soon after the above accident had come to try the new christian's faith this child took ill suddenly and died we can only imagine what a tremendous test this must have been to the grandfather's faith shortly after the grandchild's death the eldest son purchased an animal at a fair after it had been put with the other animals it was discovered to have a distemper and though it once removed the mischief was done for a few days later most of the doctor's animals were dead they were indeed dark days and through all these special testings which i have mentioned was the unceasing nagging and at times violent raging of his wife but later the testimony was given that through it all dr Dwan's faith in god never flinched when feeling the need of help and encouragement a visit to his friend the foreign doctor never failed to give fresh courage but darker days were in store for him and he surely needed all the help his fellow christian could give one day a deputation waited upon him to ask for his contribution towards the village theatrical held in honour of the village god dr Dwan received them courteously and endeavoured to show them how impossible it was for him to give to such an object now that he worshipped the one only and true god when finally the deputation saw that they could not move him they left in anger threatening that since he chose to go against the will of the people he must take the consequences the price he had to pay for this stand we shall see a few days after the above took place the doctor's watchdogs were both found poisoned the chinese depend very much upon these dogs for protection against thieves who are everywhere in this land from this on the neighbors carried on a system of petty thieving of the doctor's property which continued till within a short time of his death the village people as is general in china worked their farms on the cooperative plan at least to the extent of sharing as common property many necessary farming implements when Dr. Dwan came to require these, as was his right, they were refused. Patients ceased to come, and calls from a distance became a thing of the past. In a hundred ways he was subject to petty persecution. When these failed to bring him to his senses, more serious action was planned. One day when the doctor was away from home, the news reached him that his barn and dispensary had been set on fire and burned. A few months later, just before the wheat harvest, his wheat field was set on fire. And through it all he stood alone with his God, never shrinking, never doubting. 
then as if god saw he needed but the final refining malignant cancer of the throat brought his body low it was then that the tide of public opinion seemed to turn his wife even began to show signs of real change she no longer opposed her husband but it was not till much later that she seemed to be really converted the eldest son who had all along been secretly with his father now came out boldly as a christian and from the time when dr blank gave his verdict that dr duan could not live he devoted himself to his father endeavouring in every possible way to make up for the past even his heathen neighbours began to ask themselves have we done this man wrong the missionaries from w blank made frequent visits to the dying christian and as every detail of these visits was discussed by all the villagers everything is done openly in this land there is little doubt but that the love and interest shown by the foreigners on these visits had much to do with a rapidly changed attitude towards christianity before dr duan passed away he had the joy of hearing that his two sons his elder son's wife as well as several of his neighbors had become christians as this saint's last struggle ended and his last breath was drawn we can almost hear the welcome that awaited him and the saviour's voice as he said well done good and faithful servant enter thou into the joy of thy lord within three years of dr duan's death the writer witnessed the destruction of the village temple destroyed by public consent that the materials might be used in building a christian church on the outskirts of the village the land on which the church was built being given by one of the men who so bitterly persecuted the first christian it was in this little village church the writer heard some of the finest personal testimonies she has ever heard it was the last of a week's special meetings the leader had given opportunity for any who wished to give a personal testimony in an instant a poor working man was on his feet as if afraid lest others would get ahead of him this is what he said please pastor i want to tell how i know god answers prayer i was wheeling a barrel full of coal down a steep place the other evening when it broke down i did not dare leave my barrel or the coal would be stolen and i did not dare stay there or i would freeze so i just knelt down by the roadside and asked god to send someone to help me as i was praying a man came along and seeing me on my knees called to know what i was doing i told him i was asking my god to send me someone to help me mend my barrel the man then said your god has certainly heard you this time for i am a carpenter and i have my tools with me so come along he mended my barrow and helped me down the hill now i do know god answers prayer before the man was seated young mrs duan had risen putting the little baby she had been holding in the arms of the woman next to her she stood erect with quiet dignity and speaking in a low but clear voice that all could hear she said pastor i too wish to tell how i know god answers prayer the first days of these meetings i received such a great blessing i longed to help someone else to know christ but i had so many duties with my little children and my home i could not go out so i just kept praying as i went about my work lord make the people go to the church over and over again now hasn't he heard my prayers and with a look of triumph she waved her hand first to the women's side and then to the men's saying as she did so look there and there the building was packed aisles window seats even the windows were banked with faces all listening quietly and attentively and now the closing scene the day following the above mentioned meetings a number of christians and a crowd of not unsympathetic villagers gathered about dr duan's grave and erected to his memory a stone slab well might it have recorded on it that his path had been by way of the cross from his first gleam of the true light to his entrance into the glory beyond end of sketch one as silver is refined